I've come to the realization that most air purifiers are a scam, so I decided to make one myself. We all know that we have to eat good food to stay healthy and drink clean water to not get sick. But there is another nutrient that is so vital that we die within minutes if we're deprived of. And this nutrient is totally overlooked. I'm of course talking about air. We all know the old saying, go out and get some fresh air, it will make you feel better. But if you think about it, this would imply that the air you breathe indoors makes you feel bad. But why is this the case? Every day we take about 22,000 breaths, which is enough to fill a small swimming pool. However, not all air is created equal. Yes, it consists mostly of nitrogen and oxygen, but there are also other gases dissolved within it. The most common gases that have well-documented negative health impacts are called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Your nose is usually a great tool to detect these, and the smell of paint, the smell of new electronics, and the smell of air fresheners and perfumes, anything that smells like chemicals, are usually VOCs. But VOCs are not the only thing to worry about. In the gas there are also particles, bacteria, viruses and spores floating around. And the spores and VOCs emitted from mold are linked to everything from chronic fatigue syndrome to cancer. Simply put, we need oxygen in the air to survive, but we want to reduce the amount of other crap that enters our respiratory system as much as possible. But how can we do this? Well, the most simple way is to open a window, but this only works if it's not too cold, too hot, too humid or too noisy outside. And sometimes the outdoor air is severely polluted from people combusting gasoline or wood, and thus an open window could make the air quality even worse. The other way to get a better indoor air quality is use an air purifier. The common ones work by passing air through a porous material that traps particles and gases. But here comes the point of this video. I realize that most purifiers are too expensive and filter too little air to be useful. Many of them also completely neglect to filter these volatile organic compounds. Just look at this high-end air purifier. You have to pay $1300 and then after a year you have to start an OnlyFans to be able to afford the $600 it costs to exchange the filters. And it gets worse because ideally if you are sensitive you would want one of these in every room. And sometimes the filters need to be replaced more frequently than once per year. So how could we possibly make something that is both cheaper and better than this? By using this one simple trick called economies of scale. Whenever you want to design something that is cheap, you should use as many mass produced components as possible. In the first prototype I found these Electrolux vacuum cleaner HEPA filters that can be bought for about $6 per piece. For the application of an air purifier, where the air in the room passes through the filter multiple times, it is less important how many of these particles that the filter removes each pass, but rather how large flow of air that passes through the filter. Speaking of airflow, I found this beast of a fan that is mass produced for the purpose of growing weed. It has a maximum flow rate of 807 cubic feet per minute, which is 3.2 times greater than that of the high end competitor and 10 times more than the typical smaller air purifiers. But this is of course at the highest setting and this unit has 10 different speeds and also includes a temperature and humidity meter. When picking a fan you want it to make as little noise as possible but also have a high flow and suction power. Lastly, we also want to get rid of these volatile organic compounds. A HEPA filter can't filter these out so we have to use a different approach. I found these activated charcoal pellets that are used in ductless kitchen fans to remove cooking smells. Activated charcoal has a huge internal surface area where volatile organic molecules stick to. This works until the internal surface is fully saturated with adsorbed gas. But what few people know is that you can regenerate your activated charcoal by heating it up. This releases the gas and makes it possible to reuse your charcoal. However, almost all air purifier manufacturers makes this impossible with their filter design, which forces you to buy new filters from them. So this is an area where we can make huge cost savings. So can we make one that is both cheaper to build, cheaper to run and makes more clean air? Well, let's find out.
For the first prototype I built, with six HEPA filters and six huge compartments for activated charcoal, the idea was to brute force the amount of activated charcoal in the purifier because the apartment I was going to move into had been freshly painted and I wanted an efficient and cheap way to get rid of the VOCs. But when trying it, I quickly realized that I had way too little suction power for the fan I bought. It would have probably worked if I had used a fan from a vacuum cleaner, but that would have been way too noisy. As you can see, the HEPA filter significantly restricts the fan's suction power. So for the next prototype, I skipped the HEPA filters in order to only focus on filtering out gases. The idea was to make two tubes with charcoal in between to maximize the filtering surface area and minimize the restriction in the airflow. I ordered these XXL indestructible pantyhoses and printed an outer and inner tube. I dressed them in pantyhose in order to prevent the charcoal from falling out. I took this filter and ran it in my new apartment. My subjective experience was that yes indeed it did improve the indoor air quality, so this was a huge win. I also made a measurement by filling a room with paint thinner vapor and running the air purifier. You can see a clear drop in the total VOC levels when the air purifier is turned on. I used this air purifier in my apartment for about a month, but then I ran into some problems. While the air purifier continued to decrease the smell of paint, it started to create a sweet, musty smell instead. I speculated this could be because dust got trapped between the two layers of pantyhose, so all the air passing through it started smelling like the dust in the apartment. This is nothing unique to my design. We also bought a Dyson air purifier for about 400 bucks, and the same smell started coming out of it after about a month of use. The cost of replacing such a filter will be in the order of $50, which isn't sustainable for most people. This is why I'm very skeptical towards HEPA filters. They trap particles that emit smelly gas and eventually as the particles build up, the smell out of the purifier will become rancid. There are HEPA filters that claim to be washable, however they can only be rinsed with water, which doesn't do much versus the particles inside. So can we make something better? Well, this is what I came up with. First, I reprinted a charcoal filter to not require any nylon stocking in order to contain the activated charcoal pellets. This was made possible by simply reducing the size of the holes. This will decrease the amount of accumulated dust inside the filter and make it possible to clean it with a vacuum cleaner. I also printed this funnel to make filling the purifier with charcoal pellets easier. Since there wasn't any nylon stocking to hold the two tubes together, I had to design a locking mechanism. So the question is now how to attach these two to each other so that when you lift, if you lift it, they don't, um, uh, all the charcoal don't spill out. So I had several design iterations. Uh, and the first one was to have just like a springy thing, so like that, that it would spring into place and there's this uh, ridge here that connects to the, but it's way too floppy, so that didn't work. The second design iteration was to use this uh, expanding like uh, piston ring almost. And then you put the wedge in between here and then it will expand and then it will lock into place. But the problem is that this wedge, yeah, that, that happened. So then the third iteration was to use uh, much larger grooves in the wedge. But, um, and then you have this wedge with larger grooves and then just 
yeah, you just put them in there. But then the steps didn't become discreet enough, so it, it became floppy as well. So that didn't work. And then the final, which I'm quite proud of actually, this solution, the final solution here was to have one of these. And I had, um, there it's threads in there. So when I put them there, and then you put the, and you have this threaded expanding screw. And then, oops, you put it there and yeah, and there. And then when you screw, this one expands and locks itself into place. Also one other thing, make sure you have the right side up when adding this one. So then you put this one in, you put this one on the side there. It's just basically something to hold it into place. And then you take the then you take the top piece and you place it with the open open holes there and you place it there you take the screw and you put it there and then as you have tightened it correctly inside there you can see it's snugly snug enough then it's very hard to rip apart yeah it's it's sturdy But the question still remains, could we use this device to also capture particles in some smart way? I found these dirt cheap microfiber cloths in my local grocery store's bargain bin. By simply placing them around a filter, some of the particles in the air will hit them and through electrostatic forces be trapped inside the cloth. At least that's the theory, but does it work? To test this I filled a small room with smoke from an incense. I ran this experiment with the charcoal filter and microfiber cloth and as a control I also ran this experiment without the filter and only the fan running. What we can see is that the particle count decreases significantly faster with the filter compared to only using the fan. After the experiments I could also see a color change in the microfiber cloth which pretty much proves that it's capable of capturing soot particles. There was also a distinct smell of incense trapped in the cloth. But by washing this cloth at 30 degrees Celsius for one hour with an allergy friendly detergent, the smell and color change could be washed away. So yeah, just wrapping the charcoal filler with a microfiber cloth reduces the particle count in the room. Adding more layers of microfiber cloths or any other fabric will theoretically make the filter more efficient at capturing particles up until the point where the filter starts to restrict the airflow. Maybe this is an experiment any of you watching wants to do. I put the CAD models of the final design up on printables.com if you want to make your own air purifier. The total cost of the whole project is in the order of $170 depending on where you can source the parts, so it's cheap to build and it's cheaper to run because you can regenerate the charcoal and wash your choice of filter on the outside. Make sure to watch any of my other videos, there are plenty of things to learn that you won't learn anywhere else.